Hi everyone, welcome to Norwegian Modeling Bench and this log on how to make a sea base. So I have uh, completed now the sea base for the Admiral Graf Spee and this is a part of that build log, um, build log series. And I will show you here the steps that I took to create the sea base. Of course, there are many ways to create a sea base, but this is at least an approach that I think yields good results. Uh, so this will be the last log uh, of the build itself before presenting the completed model in the next log. So I hope that uh, it will provide you a bit of an insight at least of how I did this and maybe give you an inspiration and some ideas of how to make your own. So I hope that you enjoy and like the final results. Yeah, so then I've started looking at the, um, the base, the sea base that I want to put uh, the ship in. So I have um, put together two uh, sheets or rather four sheets of uh, styrene foam from uh, Woodland Scenics. Glued them together and also measured out the um, measurements uh, for the base. Uh, so the next step now is to mark out with a waterline where I want the ship to go and then um, make an opening for the ship, making sure that it fits in and then I will uh, cover the, um, the foam with the plaster cloth and um, the sides I will probably use flex paste because that's hard and I can uh, sand, sand it flat. And then there are a number of steps uh, and this takes a bit of time because there is quite a bit of drying time between each step and um, I hope that uh, the end result will be good. So please uh, follow along and let's see how this pans out. Okay, so this is the waterline that follows uh, the kit. Uh, so it's it's a good template for uh, marking out uh, the opening that's required in the base. I want to have it at a bit of an angle to make uh, at, at least a bit of an interesting scene. And then also placed such a way that there is room on the other side here, which you can't see, of course, for, for the wake uh, and um, then all um, the uh, disturbances in the water from the propellers. So then I'm uh, just outlining the, the water line. Just a rough idea on where it's going to go. And then I will make an opening through the base uh, so I can place the ship inside to see if the fit is okay. I know there are other pencils that can be used that is better suited for this, but I guess this will work out nicely. So, um, and then it's uh, time to look at some photos in terms of how the the wake goes uh i'll of course make this uh, a bit more realistic uh and, and work on it but it, it is at least uh from what i've seen around this area where you can see this first uh, wave coming off from the bow and usually it's around 20 degrees uh, from the ship side uh, as a rule at least and there are as far as I can remember from the pictures two or three waves coming from from the ship sides and then you have the wake uh, which is going on the aft of course on the stern um, that also needs to be addressed so the next step now is then to cut out uh, this hole for the ship itself and then make some of those bigger waves that go into 
the area so there is a bit more uh, water or weather so to say um, and um, and when that is done then it's time to work on the plaster Okay, so then I've done some adjustments and the ship fits in. So not making the hole as so big that it actually just falls through. Uh, you need to have some support for this when, um, when attaching it later. Uh, so the ship has some odd shapes here in the middle, uh, which you need to take account for also the propeller shafts uh, went in the way. I could of course just snap them off, but I didn't want to. Uh, so the fit looks okay. I will also film from the other angle, so it's a bit easier to see, uh, but otherwise it, um, it fits very well into the hole now. So we should be able to move ahead with uh, the most messy operation, which is the plaster. Um, so yeah, let's view it from the other angle. So this is how it looks from uh, the side. Looks like we have a pretty good uh, fit all over. Uh, a bit too much up on the, uh, on the aft here I see, so I will do some minor adjustments there, but also keep in mind that um, there will be some more on uh, top of this and uh, also adding the wake and the side foam will also add to this. And of course there are some areas that needs to be filled in when uh, putting the model into place when the base is ready at that stage. Yeah, so then I prepared uh, some of the uh, plaster cloth uh, sheets, so they fit a bit better to the um, the foam. Um, so then it's uh, getting these wet, adding them to the surface, and then smoothen the surface, creating waves, getting a good um, base for the color that's going on top. Uh, so this is a messy uh, operation, so you should have something underneath so your uh, work area won't get too messy. Using gloves is definitely preferable uh, and switching gloves between so you don't get dry plaster into the, uh, into the surface. So that's the procedure. So trying to make sure that the texture of the plaster cloth isn't very visible through the um, through the plaster. Some touch-ups will be required afterwards, of course, but overall that's the procedure to work with. 
so dipping the clo cloth in water for like 10 seconds and then applying it to the area of course it doesn't need to be perfect this is water so it will have some life it should have some life I want it to be all over the place of course and as smooth as possible if things get dry you can just dip your hands into water to to get uh, some moisture into the area again that's required the most important thing is to get rid of the structure of the plaster cloth itself because that won't look very realistic if you have too many areas with um, with the grid from from the plaster cloth I might need to go over some areas here with some additional plaster cloth but that's fine um, and then the edge shouldn't be too protruding and as I said there might be a need to go uh, doing some minor fix-ups uh, afterwards this will be a good starting point for the wave as well Trying to make some wave patterns while I'm working on this. And of course you can use putty and other things to improve the surface a bit later. Those treads are not always easy to work with, but okay, it looks, looks fine now. You can cut away some excess things later on. Okay, so that's the procedure. Then the entire area has been covered by a plaster cloth. I've also added some of the waves from the ship. So I have a basis for uh, working on those later on. So um, now it needs to um, dry for 24 hours before I can give it the base black coat. Uh, yeah, and I also of course need to, to add the flex paste on the front side so I can get a neat uh, edge. Um, on the base okay so then the base has gotten its black color so this uh, black earth colors from um, woodland scenics so now it's time to give it some of the deep blue uh, which uh, will be the base for the next coat so this is just to give it a bit more of a depth uh, and also protect against uh, the plaster underneath. So uh, and this of course needs 24 hours to, um, to dry up before the next step. So as I said, this is a lengthy process. So 24 hours later, the deep blue has dried. Uh, so for the next step, I am going to uh, airbrush this um, dark sea gray uh, color to the surface. 
doesn't need to be uh, completely covered. Some uh, areas would be nice to have some, some different shadings. Uh, so in, in the sea, it's not like one uniform color, of course. And um, then uh, going forward with different accent uh, colors uh, for the waves and um, areas where the uh, the ship is going through so that those that will be the um, the next steps uh, going ahead then the sea gray has been applied uh, hopefully the camera picks up the color differences so a bit more life now so the next step is to go ahead with some uh, Luftwaffe uniform uh, second world war um, and uh, then mixing in a bit of off-white and that is then applied to the different wave, the tops and then a bit uh, uh, around, uh, randomly around uh, the area. So we get more accents uh, into the, to the seabed. So this is how it looks after adding uh, Luftwaffe uh, uh, uniform and off-white. So more um, accents on the waves and this forms the basis for the acrylics that needs to be added on top. So I'm going to add uh, two layers of that. So each of those layers need uh, 24 hours of drying time. And then we have um, the basis for adding texture, etc., on top of that. So that will be the next steps after the acrylic layer. Then the acrylic has been uh, added in two layers. Um, so now it's starting to look like water. I'm um, using uh, this water texture, texture acrylic from Vallejo. Um, so and uh, each um, each coat needs 24 hours of drying time. So the next thing up now is to apply some uh, water uh, texture. Uh, so I will be using uh, this with a blue tint, which will go over the entire area in a, um, not not a thick layer, a uh, thin layer and. Um, and then a bit more dabbing on top of the waves uh, to uh, to give um, give that a bit more life. The water texture has dried now for 24 hours, and um, it might seem a bit exaggerated uh, uh, at places, but uh, this will be toned down by the next uh, step. And that is to uh, to mix up a combination of uh, glaze medium, um, off white, and the texture, and a bit of uh, thinner, and then um, applying that to the tops of the waves. Um, so that will be my next step. Not is something that you will probably need a couple of rounds on until uh, you're happy with the result. But uh, all in all, I think it's looking fairly decent. So moving on. So this is how it looks after I have applied the aforementioned uh, paints. Uh, I think it's looking rather good now. So the next uh, thing now is to get uh, the ship in place and uh, then adding more of the waves that go up uh, onto the hull side um, and then a, a final coat of acrylic so uh, that will be up next i have now weathered the, the ship and um, hopefully it looks good i don't want to do any more i'm 
on the edge, I think, in terms of things being too exaggerated. Uh, so what I have used is um, the, uh, this uh, chocolate uh, brown, just small uh, dabs of that in places where I wanted it to be like old rust. Then I went over with uh, light rust and uh, using thinner to uh, to like wash uh, the color and then eventually um, this uh, light rust which is thin and and a bit uh, orange in in the color um, so combining all of these I think gives a good appearance of rust and then I have uh, used uh, AK Naval uh, Ship Weathering color. So this is a grey wash for uh, Kriegsmarine ships, uh, AK um, 303. Uh, washing that with uh, the older less uh, thinner. And same thing with, uh, with salt streaks. So this should be a bit... Uh, life in um, the, the surface of the hull. I have not uh, done anything more on top of the ship. Uh, usually that's the parts where it's best maintained. So I don't think um, making a lot of uh, weathering on top of the superstructure makes sense. So the next step now is to uh, put the ship into the sea base um, and uh, fastening it there. And that is a um, an operation which requires some time and uh, some steps as well. So now the ship is in the base and uh, we need to um, to fill the gaps here between uh, the ship and the base itself. So what I'm uh, using is nothing more glamorous than toilet paper, uh, soaking that in uh, in the still water um, uh, from from Vallejo. Um, this will uh, dry completely transparent, and it is a good way to to fill up the, the cavities or the gaps uh, that is between the ship and the base. Uh, so this, this needs, of course, a bit of drying time before I can continue. But um, it's a good way to, uh, to also fasten the ship to the, to the base itself. So now I'm going to complete that before I am uh, moving forward uh, with the next step which is um, to um, to add some of the texture uh, to uh, to the to the sides so it's a it's a long operation making these uh, c bases but eventually it will look good So then the um, paper and uh, still water has dried. Uh, so this is 24 hours later, so this is hard. And as you can see, also uh, transparent. So uh, what I need to do now is to add some of this um, water texture uh, to add on the areas that needs uh, extra water and to uh, complete um, the foam up against the waterline or the hull. So that will be my next step.
then I'm uh, adding the foam around the um, hull. So what I'm using is these this um, diorama effects, um, foam effects from Vallejo, using a um, toothpick to add it to the hull uh, or the waterline, I mean. So just small steps and it should definitely not be even. That's not natural. And then when this is dry, I will um, add another layer of still water on the entire sea base. So then it's time to cover the entire base with still water. And that's the last step in um, creating the sea base. Yeah, and note that I'm not putting it up on the waves, but just on flat areas where there are no foam. And the entire sea base has been covered by another layer of still water and it's drying now. So that uh, concludes uh, how to make a sea base. So for the Graf Speer project, the next thing now is to complete uh, the rigging. So as you can see, I've started uh, on some of it. And of course, getting um, the crew members painted and placed on the ship. So I hope that uh, this gave you an idea of uh, how to make such a sea base and uh, that it's entirely feasible for your project as well. Um, and uh, if you like uh, this uh, type of uh, log, uh, please uh, give me comments and uh, like and subscribe. Otherwise, keep safe until next time. Bye now.